You are holy, holy, you are holy. You are holy, holy, you are holy. You are only Lord. You are only Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are holy Lord. You are holy Lord. You are holy Lord. Hey. Only you are holy. You are holy Lord. You are holy Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Oh, you are holy, Lord. Holy, you are holy. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Oh, you are holy, Lord. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, Lord. Oh, 
holy Lord, only you are holy. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is the name of Jesus. Amen. You can sit down. Please. So this is the week that God will use his word to set you free. So I just want to make the foundation uh, by preaching this message to you. Let's open the scriptures in Second Timothy 3. From verse 1, from easy translation. 2 Timothy 3, from verse 1. Uh, I'll read from easy translation. It says, Let me tell you this during the last days of this world, there will be times of great trouble. People will love only themselves. People will love only themselves. Yes. Have you seen the verse? People will love only themselves. They will be proud. Let me start again. Let me tell you this during the last days of this world, there will be times of great trouble. People will love only themselves. In fact, I'm just repeating that deliberately so that you, you go there. And they will want lots of money for themselves. They will be proud. They will say how great they are. My God, you can hear that verse. They will say how great they are. They will insult other people. They will not thank anyone that helps them. They will not respect anything that is good. They will not be kind to other people, but they will like to quarrel. They will tell lies to hurt other people and they'll be unable to rule themselves properly. They'll be cruel. They will be cruel like wild animals. Survival of the fittest. They will hate anything that is good. People will turn against their friends. They will do silly things and not think carefully about it. They will be sure that they are very important. They will not love God, but instead, they will only want to enjoy themselves. Those people will seem to be saving God, but really, they refuse to accept God, God's power to help them. You must stay away from people like that. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. You see, when I'm reading this, I felt like uh, already you got the message because the message is about people, if we are hearing that. And such people are among us, and it might be ourselves. So just write greedy. 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 These are the people that are being mentioned here. People who are greedy. 
a greedy is a saying that always stagnate us. When you are greedy, you stagnate yourself and you are able to identify yourself that you are better than others. You are always in a competition. Always. What can make you to understand that you have a sin of greedy? Number one is pride. Number two is competition. In other words, you are not happy when other people are, succe are, are successful. You want to be better than them. Number three, you become self-centered. These are the people that the Bible is talking about. You become self-centered. Or number four, you can even write corruption. Corruption is part of you. You have to find a way out to get money in a wrong way. So greedy. When you are greedy, you always have to get something, especially money, in a very wrong way. For yourself. You don't think about other people. Amen. So, the verse that I want us to look very carefully is verse, one, verse 2. They will love only themselves. They will only love themselves. So, you can see that people of greedy, they can still love, but they love themselves. People of greedy, they love, but they love themselves. They cannot love other people. That's why all other things will happen. Pride, competition, self-centering, and also jealousy. All these fruits of evil, it happens to them. Jesus, our Lord, he referenced that on Matthew 25, from verse 1, where he spoke about people who are greedy. If we can go to Matthew 25, from verse, this is what we know. He was talking about foolish ones. Uh, from verse 2, he says, five of this young woman were silly. In other words, they lack common sense or judgment. Silly, they lack common sense or judgment. And the other were young women were wise. Verse 3, it says, the silly woman took their lamps with them, but they did not take an extra oil with them. I want us to look at that. Why? Because they wanted to save for themselves. Other, they spent all to be able to wait. Have you ever find that you are able to spend all you have to be able to wait for the Lord? But these ones, they saved for themselves. So they become greedy. You could see that when you are greedy, you lack judgment. You cannot judge yourself before you are judged. Because you will be looking at what will happen if we fail? What will happen if what we are waiting for is not coming? So always you'll be thinking about how to save your life. Greedy people always they think about how to save their lives. Not to save others. To save their lives. If a bomb can explode, explode here, you will see greedy people. They won't look around. They run for their lives. But those who have love, because the moment when you overcome greedy, you start to have love. You start to love people. Because greedy makes you to hate people. But there are certain people you love. People that are also connected with you. Amen. So here, the Bible says, the silly woman took their lambs with them, but they did not take an extra oil. Where was the money of extra oil? 
if you remember when Jesus came now, is when those who were not greedy says, ah, we know you have money. Go and buy for yourself. We don't have money. And whatever we have is enough for the waiting. If we reach a level whereby we are able to use all our effort in waiting for God, we are not greedy. Because we know that we won't save. We won't save. We use all to wait. We won't save. Greedy people, they mind about saving. So when Jesus spoke about that, he said on this verse, uh, he said, verse 5, the man who was marrying a wife did not come for a long time. So all the young women become tired and they went to sleep. Listen to this. Whatever happens to the people of love happens to the greedy people. Whatever. All they waited. All they had time to wait. But this other one, when they are waiting, they still have other plans about their lives. Waiting is the best gift. Tell them about waiting is the best gift from God. So what is it that you are doing when you are waiting? What is it that you are doing when you are waiting? Check from now. Check when you are waiting upon the Lord. If you are waiting upon the Lord, try to save what you are supposed to give. You are greedy. If you are waiting upon the Lord when you cannot assist other people, you become greedy. He who is not greedy, when he's waiting, he knows what he's waiting for. If, if you want to know that you know what you are waiting for, we look at the character you are displaying when you are waiting. We look at the character. There will be no greedy. There will be no issue of loving yourself or try to show you are better than others because you know where your blessing is coming from. And you understand that even others can be still blessed by God. Amen. Amen. So that is the main problem. That's why we have learned that in Acts chapter 5 also. Just go and read again that Acts chapter 5 where you see that always greedy people they don't stand in their vows. They always change their minds. When money comes, what they said they will do. Because they, listen, whoever change what he has promised is a liar. If you are greedy, you are always a liar. You can speak about, I'm going to do one, two, three, you won't do it. When money is there, you change. So, here, the Bible shows that the greedy people are like that. They can promise you things that they will never do. Because naturally, they are liars. Amen. As somebody says, are you not greedy? Do you know that, I want to tell you something that you need to learn. Because you might be saying you're a Christian, whereas you're not different with Satan. Satan was greedy. Because he won praises. He wanted, even now, praises to come to him, not to God. He could compete with God and say, he wants to go above God. Satan was always greedy. If you want to see that you are greedy, check how you relate with people with what you have. Check how you relate with people with what you have. You will understand how far are you in the things of the Spirit? It is easy to understand how far are you in the things of the Spirit? Because listen to this. Already I am telling you. If you are able to set up a promise and you break it tomorrow, it means there is something wrong in your heart. If you are able to change what you have promised it means what you were saying you were not so you are not different with Satan God what he want us to be is to speak with like Elijah who said the rain is coming 
but there's no cloud. Yes, it's coming. There will be the sun. There will be a day. And it is established. We become people of faith. Amen. Amen. So most of the time, greed makes us not to be fulfilled in God's hand. Because we cannot stand on our promises. In Hebrews 13, from verse 5 to 6. I believe after this message, you will seek for the poor, poor people and bless them. You, 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 those people that, you know, who are searching for help, you will try to help them. And those who are, you know, who are insulting you, you won't answer them. Because the moment when you are greedy, you are defensive. You want to establish your image. But because you are trying to be a person of pride, when you are greedy, you are doing like that. Can you just read verse 5 and 6, Mama, in the book of Hebrews 13? It says, let your character meaning your moral essence, your inner nature, be free from the love of money, shun greed, be financially ethical, being content with what you have. For he has said, I will never under any circumstances desert you, nor, for, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. Nor will I in any degree leave you helpless. Nor will I forsake or let you down or relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So we take comfort and are encouraged and confidentially say, The Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What will men do to me? Are you hearing that? The reasons of fear of other people is because of greed. The Lord says, I will never leave you. The Lord says, I will never leave you. If, if you can look there, you will see two or three things that can really challenge you. The first one is, be happy with what you have. Just be happy with the things that you have. You don't have a car. Be happy about that. What makes you better when you have a car? You are still yourself. How can we see that you came here by a car now? Or by a taxi? Here, be happy with the things you have. Number two, it says, you must not be afraid because the Lord here says, I will be with you. Do not be afraid of anything. Don't be afraid of a debt. Don't be afraid of what will happen, whether you will lose this thing tomorrow. Don't be afraid. If you do that, you'll be able to say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord is my helper. Have you ever reached a level whereby things are becoming tough, but you say, the Lord is my helper? You're not afraid. What makes us to be afraid? Because we want to be identified like other people. Sometimes we end up being in debt because of that. We end up trying to be identified with, like other people. If things are not coming your way, allow God to be God. Amen. I say amen. amen. Okay, look at this one. Uh, if I'm reading with this verse, it says, In the way you live, do not want lots of money. Hey, yeah, that one. The way you live, do not want lots of money. Allow money to search for you. Do you know that people who search for money, money does not search for them. When you start to search for money, money will never... The Bible says, seek the kingdom, all shall follow. Amen. If you live a life where you start from zero, it will be very good for you. You will see 
and appreciate what God is doing upon your life. But if you just find that things are running very fast, you won't understand where God took you. It is easy to develop a spirit that will lead you to greedy. Greedy. Greedy is a sin that will take us down. Greedy. It's a sin that will take us down. You find that we won't be able now to have the spirit of God. The verse that makes me to be happy about is verse 6, which I want to read for you. Because of that, we can be bravely say this, the Lord is the one who helps me. I will not be afraid. I will not be afraid of anything that people can do to me. If you are not afraid of anything that people can do to you, you can't respond to them. You cannot fight them. You cannot prove them wrong if you're not afraid. The reasons why you're afraid, that's why you respond. It's as good as uh, you're working. I, I was looking at the people when they're responding to each other. I said, what is this? If, if you're walking on the road and there's a small dog, you know, we call it Pragi. I said, wow, 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 wow. Are you going to run away? You carry on walking. But if the bigger dog starts to bark, automatically you have to run away. You will think about something will bite me here. Amen. So it's what the Bible says. You cannot be afraid. You cannot be afraid. Why? Because the Lord is your helper. There are things that are coming to threaten your life. Don't be afraid of losing what you have. The Lord is with you. Do you know that the Lord will never allow you to go down from where you are? If you trust him the more, things will be like it's going this side or going on the other side. Remove your mind from money. You don't need lots of money. You need God. I say you don't need lots of money. You need God. There are things that money cannot buy. There are things that money cannot buy. Money can buy a car, but it cannot buy joy. Money can buy a house, but it cannot buy peace. So you don't need a lot. You don't need to think about money. That's the reason why you find our churches today in black community, you find that our churches are shameful because people are always think about money. Okay, I need to save. I need to do this. Okay, I have to wear to be seen. Whatever they want to do, they want to do it for other people. They're not doing it for the glory of God. If truly whatever we are doing is for God, this spirit that will bring us to have greedy will leave us. And God will begin to work in our lives. I pray that from now on, God will open doors for you. If you believe, say amen. amen. What are you going to do when God starts to bless you? You are still going to bless others because you know where are the blessing come from. Amen. Look at this verse that we are reading now here. In 1 Timothy 6. 1 Timothy 6, 9 to 10. This thing I've been preaching to you, it's like I have to repeat this because of the blessings that are coming now. There are blessings that are, there's money coming. I said there's money coming. So don't be greedy. Can we read from verse 9, 1 Timothy 6, verse 9 to 10. But those who are not financially ethical uh -huh. and crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth fall into temptation and a trap and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction leading to personal misery for the love of money that is the greedy desire for it and the willingness to gain it unethically is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves through and through with many sorrows 
there's a lot of depression around because of the love of money. Try to save. Greedy. There's a lot of depression. Many sickness are coming from greedy. What is it that people will look at me tomorrow if I lose this car? Because you are living for people. What if where I'm staying in my house, they come and take everything and I lose all? This is the life of this world where people, they are always crave to become rich. Always crave to become rich. And the Bible says they fall unto temptation. I was uh, with uh, Mr. Gamma. I was showing him something yesterday when we were coming. And this thing is happening everywhere. Everywhere. So when we were coming here to the wedding, we are meeting a school girls holding their bags like this. And then we were in Mama's car. When Mama's car, we were using Mama's car. That car is a very demonic car. Very demonic. I've never seen something like that. Young girls. They were still saying, hey, hey, look at that. Ooh. And I say, oh, that's the reason why there's rape. I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say. That's the reason why we have wrong relationships. That's the reason why we have got, I mean, people, you know, who end up being killed. Because if now you are just saying, hey, I say, hey, when I come here, you say, hey. And from there, I take you to America. Because if you can see that here, it shows that all of us, it's like we are born with sin. How can a young girl holding bags like this, seeing a car like this, because hey, what about you? Who knows how much is the car? Automatically, you'll calculate and you end up dreaming about how can I get there. That's why we have all these wrong relationships. Everybody's craving to be there. We don't want to go in a right path. We don't want to seek the kingdom and all shall follow. I don't know if I hear it. Everybody wants to be on top. The same applies if you, you, you want to marry in some families. When you reach there, you hear ma mama says, where is he working? The, when you start to say, I have someone, the first question is, what is he doing in life? And some people now, they have realized that they come, they ask cars of their friends. They say, Mjita, And from there, they come and see you with the car of your friend. You wake up when you are pregnant. They fall under divas of temptations. If you always do friendship, by looking at the things of the world, you'll be tempted. Very soon, you'll find yourself failing in life. Amen. We need to be very careful about that. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Those who, are, who crave to get rich fall into temptation and harmful, many of them in foolishness. In foolishness. They plunge themselves in foolishness. This is the time that you must never get something and just be excited about if you have never worked for. If you have never worked for that thing, don't be excited about it. Uh, I told Andres when the U.S. I said, the money we have never worked for, we don't need it. We don't, we don't even need it. We need to work and God will pay. Amen. Because the blessing will come when you are faithful in that position you have been placed. But if you crave to be rich, oh, what will happen tomorrow? Oh, if I can get this, if I can gather, you will never get it. This is the time that we run away from this temptation. Satan is able to
touch you there. This is a sign from this word. When you crave to be rich, you fall into temptation. It means, it means greediness is a way that devil can use to catch you. Always when you are always dreaming about what is it that you can get tomorrow, Satan is very close to you. You must be very careful about that. Amen. Amen. Let's read Luke 12. I don't want to say money is the root of all evil. No. It's also root of all good things. Is that getting it in a wrong way is a root of all evil. Luke 12 verse 15. It says what? Then he said to them, Watch out and guard yourselves against every form of greed. For not even when one has an overflowing abundance does his life consist or nor is it derived from his possessions. That verse is telling us that there is nothing in the world that makes you. Amen. Nothing in the world that makes you to be you. There is nothing in this world that can derive you to be what God wants you to be. You must know that whatever that follows you is out of your faith. Whatever that comes your way is out of what you believe. Here, this verse, verse 15 is important to us here. Then he said, all people, be careful. Be careful. Do not want more things than you really need. Do, in fact, the food of today, you know, if God gives you the food of today, it's enough. If God provides tomorrow, it's enough. One time I found that, uh, you know, when people go to these shops where there's food, you find there's chips here, there's what, what, food is there everywhere. But check how far you eat there. How far you eat on those food there. The ones you take picture. You take picture, check how, how far you eat. Do you eat the whole table? No. You don't eat the whole table. That's why God has to give you what is due to that time. God must give. If he's not giving enough, you must thank God. Listen, even if God can give you 20 million, you won't finish three plates. Even if he can give you 100 million, you won't finish three plates. So your life is not constituent with the things of this world. If you don't have them, allow God to be God. Don't have greedy. And don't associate with the higher people. Associate with the humble. And God will lift you up. Amen. Can you read that verse again, Mama? Verse 15, it says what? Again. Then he said to them, watch uh -huh. out and guard yourselves against every form of greed. For not, not even when one has an overflowing abundance does his life consist or no, it, is it derived from his possessions? Read. Then he told them a parable saying, there was a rich man whose land was very fertile and productive. And he be began thinking to himself, what shall I do since I have no place large enough in which I store my crops. So you know this, this story that Jesus was, it's a parable. But Jesus was saying, there are forms of greedy. You must be careful. It's not one form. There are forms. You need to find in your heart which form is making you to be there where God doesn't want you to be. There are different forms so you spoke about this form of a rich man who saw and he become rich and he told himself and say so 
Now this is the time of extending bands. This man, he could not thank God. This man, he never had mind for others. He told himself, there are forms. We need to check our forms. Sometimes when we get salary, we are being checked. How far do you spend with your salary? How far? How do you spend your salary? How do you live with people with the money you have? We can still come here, we shout hallelujah, we speak in tongues. But if greed is in us, we are still living without God. I don't know if you are hearing that. Greediness is very dangerous. Because it, it stagnates you. It doesn't allow you to learn other people's lives. Because you learn them by reaching them out. If you want to, succeed, to be successful in life, learn to, to reach other people irrespective of their weakness or their strength. If you want to reach them, you will, you will know people. You will never know people that you don't reach. Greatness wants to put you in a prison. It puts you there, whereby always you look at yourself. You want to shine your shine. You want to move around there. You won't know what is happening around. There is too much life which is different outside. So there are forms. You check. If you do be best things to those ones and you leave those ones, it's another form. If there are people that you are associating with uh, people who don't need your help, it's another form of, of greedy. If you live with people that don't need your help, who are of your caliber, it's another form of greedy. Greedy makes you to be so self-centered that you don't want people who will depend on you. Those who depend on you, you've got already reasons why you won't help them. We need to be careful that a man stinks, cannot save him. If you can be rich, your responsibility is so enough, is so vast that you'll be required to exercise love to other people you are required to prove that you love people. Amen. As somebody says, are you not having greedy? Are you sure? Today we are in a church like this because of greedy people. We have, we've got people are like around here because of greedy people. Because God will never promote people who are greedy. When God blesses you, he's looking at others. Tell them, when God blesses you, is looking at others. How many people you have failed? There are some people you have failed and their prayers, their prayers have reached before God. If truly you want to be successful in life, make sure that you don't fail anyone that God sent to you. If truly you want to be successful in life, make sure you don't fail anyone that God is sending to you. Amen. If you believe, say amen. amen. And I believe there are people that God is going to send to you. Such people, they've got, they've got your blessing. Amen. amen. Ask your neighbor, are you not greedy? And your neighbor say what? No. Let's read the scripture we carry on. Proverbs Eleven verse six. Can you read that verse? It's important. The righteousness of the upright will rescue him, but the treacherous will be caught by their own greed. The treacherous will be caught by their own greed. The righteousness of the upright will rescue them. The, the, the upright people, they are always doing what is right. When they see there's a need, they solve the problem. They cannot laugh at others. They cannot shun other people. They will always try to exercise the authority they have to lift others. But those who are greedy, 
they've got some ways that catch them up. Treacherous are ways, wicked ways that will catch them. How you make money will catch you up. How you want to be rich will catch you up. Already I found that if, if you can see in our country everywhere, if you stay with people you are better than them, you become the enemy. If you cannot share what you have to them, they won't be your friend. If you reach the people and you stay with them and you cannot reach them, those people will kill you one day. So if truly you are not having greedy, you will be able to reach them. You will never fight a person that reach out to people, who love people, who give to people. Because their mouth is, their mouth, their voices are his voice. There are some people, if you reach to them and you say, Makana is is not a man of God, they will clap you. There are some people who will join you, but there are some people who will clap you. The moment when you are greedy, you open yourselves to different attacks from people. But no one can fight you if he's eating your food. Tell me about No one will fight you if he's eating your food. If he does that, he's a betrayer. If he does that, he's a betrayer. And betrayer to you, God used them to lift you up to another level. So if you want to be successful in life as a child of the living God, do not be greedy. Check what is it that the family is saying about you. There's something that me and Mama, we did, which I want to tell you. And then we did this thing for many years. We vowed that we we'll never ask money from our parents. We need to support them. We need to support them. Me and Mama would drive and go. If you want to hear what parents will say, it become, you know, a blessing. By then, I didn't have a lot of money. By then, I went with my car, with my wife, and then my wife present money to, to my mom. And we moved out. We went to buy grocery. We bring them to the house. And my mom says, you are going to be very rich. Because, listen to this, there are some people that if they speak something, it must come to pass in your life. But they cannot speak when you are greedy. When you are greedy, they have to cry. You become self-centered. You know, when they die, you want to buy, you know, a presidential coffin to show us that you buried them. But they were crying about you because you are greedy. My mom said, you are going to be very rich. By then, I had this car that uh, it was called Chevrolet Captiva by then. And I was driving, going there. And I began to say, I mean, yes, she's right. I believe her. I believe this mama. I believe. Can I tell you this? This greedy is really affecting others and affecting you. Break it, you get promotion. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes, do something that will make someone to talk. If it's not talking, God is speaking. But if you just stay like this, no, you are calculating, you are looking at your account, you are doing like this, what will happen with you? There are some people that if you give them hand run, they will say, thank you. They go three steps and turn and say, thank you very much. They, go, they will say, thank you until you reach somewhere. They are praying for you. But look what is happening. 
when you park a car, you even check where is this guy coming from? Where is he? If he's there, you run so fast because you don't want to release even 10 rand. Greedy is killing you. You can even make accident when you are running away, failing to support someone who was showing you, come and park a car this side. Come this side. Many people around us, God is using the, them to test us if we are Christians. Many people around you, God is using them to test you. Look, you are failing in your home. You are failing from your brothers and sisters. What are you going to do outside? You are just failing from home. Even you are failing to yourself. You are so greedy that even your fridge is full of water inside there. And two pieces of meat inside. If we open there, you don't want anybody to open. But it's decorated outside there. Someone could think there is something inside there. You become greedy even to yourself. You become selfish to yourself. The suit you are wearing is of 10 years ago, 5 years ago. Because the moment when you become greedy for other people, you cannot be right with yourself. And the same man you are trying to save, they will use it to bury you. This is the time now that you don't love money so much. You love God so much. And God is going to bless you. If you believe, say amen. amen. Look at your neighbor. You will see that your neighbor loves money so much. You, say, tell your neighbor, say, you love money so much. If you want to see that your neighbor loves money so much, check month end. Check month end. Month end. You hear your neighbor praying, praying in tongues. It's month end. You hear your neighbor pray in tongues. But on the 15th, say, oh God, why? Why me? The moment when your neighbor money enters here, it's greedy. The moment, the moment when money enters here, you just pray, to, oh, Rabba Sakata, Yakasha. But when all the debts has taken the money, God, why? Oh God, but why? Increase my salary. Even the way you dance now in the church here, you don't enjoy dance now. But towards month end here, your legs comes here. It comes here. You are dancing for God. When someone says, why you are dancing like that? He said, the Bible says, David, dance mightily. That David of yours come month end. It doesn't come between... I don't know if you're hearing me. Can you see how, you, how much you're affected? Your Christianity is of a season. It's, it comes in some certain times. A child of God won't be affected by things. Those things will catch you up. Look at this scripture we are reading. 2 Peter 2 verse 12. It says what? Well, Second Peter two, verse twelve. But these four teach teachers, like unreasoning animals, mere creatures of instinct, born to be captured and destroyed, revealing. Rebuking. Re sorry, rev reviling things they do not understand will also perish in their own corruption in their destroying they will be destroyed there's something that since I start this ministry I'm afraid of it it's a seed it's a seed here the Bible talks about us here yeah, it says, born to be captured and destroyed. Rebuking what they do not understand. In other words, preaching what they don't even understand. Doing the same. I've learned that, that me, I don't want someone to come and give me money without a reason. This I've been practicing it for several times. 
because some people can give you money that will hinder another money. There are some blessings that hinder another blessing. You can be excited of what you are receiving now, whereas it's there to stop you. You find that what you are receiving is capturing you and is destroying you. We need to be very careful of what we are receiving. Amen. Well, we, we must get things in a right way. We must get things in a right way. When you want to be a child of God, who fear God, who understand that it's only God who blesses you, be careful how you receive things. Be careful. Don't manipulate it. Especially us who are preaching the gospel, you know, we can still make that. Come and sow a seed. Come and sow a seed. It's not wrong if someone is having revelation of that. It's not wrong. But if you don't have revelation of that, automatically you can be captured in that sea and destroy yourself. You know, I was beginning to see that greedy is very dangerous. It can make you it can make you to prove that you are hearing from God when God is not speaking. That is greedy for you. I just remember one man came to me and said, hey, you don't want to go to India? I said, no. I said, what? I said, because many wrong things have happened in the church. So I want to pray for India. And he says, hey, you know, when you say something like that, he says, one man of God came there and said, hey, he said he was sitting with people. When he was prophesying, he says, God say you must give me your iPad. God say you must give me your what what. He said, people lost things. I say it's greedy. Greedy can make you to be a thief. A greedy makes someone to be a thief. Because you eat what does not belong to you. You take what is not worthy for you to take. It's as good as you're a child of God here and you're eating tithe. It's because of greedy. Because you are eating what does not belong to you. I don't know if you're hearing that. So greedy makes you, you can enrich yourself by the things that does not belong to you. And those things are the ones that will give a, an attack tomorrow. You are destroying yourself. Listen, whatever is not of you, brings an attack to you. That is why God doesn't want us to take to take what is not ours. He says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give to God what belongs to God. Because that's where you're able to live your life if you believe. Say amen. Can you read that verse uh, verse 13, Mama? Suffering wrong, destined, or punishment as the wages of doing wrong. Yes. They count it as delight to reveal and the daytime living luxuriously. There are stains and blemishes on making, revealing in their deception, even as they feast with you. Carry on. They have eyes full of adultery, constantly looking for sin, enticing and luring away unstable souls. Having hearts trained in greed, they are children of a curse, abandoning the straight road that is the right way to live. They have gone astray. They have followed the way of the false teacher, Balaam, the son of Beo, who loved the reward of wickedness, but he was rebuked for his own transgression. A mute donkey spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. So you can see here that greedy provokes the spirit of adultery. Greedy. The moment when you get things in the wrong way, it attracts you to sin. A sexual sin. Let's call it adultery or fornication. Sin of adultery. That is 
that makes your soul to be unstable. That's why when I was looking at these girls being attracted by car, I was worried. They're still going to school. What is car for them? And when they finish that school, I mean, that car will be, it won't be a car for them. There's no need for them to worry about this car. Because 10 years to car, they won't even love the car. So, Balaam, he went to prophesy because he wanted money. And God never wanted him to go there. He went to prophesy to curse the Israelites because he wanted money. And the angel of the Lord stood in front of him. He could not even see the angel. To extend that his donkey began to speak with him. Because the donkey was see the angel. Think about that. What makes this greedy? It makes you to close your spiritual eyes. Someone is just going there. He wants money there, but he can't see what God is saying here. The moment when you greedy start to control you, the love of money, your spiritual eyes are closed. You, you, you'll be surprised of the visions you are getting. You'll be surprised there's no revelation in your life. I don't know if you're hearing me. If you take money away, you bring God closer to you. God will tell you where to get money. God will guide you. The reasons why we can't hear from God, God, God is because money is becoming our God. We are becoming more greedy. We don't understand that all these things are coming from God. So we need to be very careful about the way of Balaam. Doing things to get something that God never said do it. As long as we get money, okay, that's fine. So there's a lot of Balaam spirit everywhere. Greedy everywhere. Many people came to me and said they want to be pastors. I say, oh God, in future, it will be very difficult to be a pastor. I've been saying that here. As it's going to be very difficult to be a pastor. Even to be a Christian, when Jesus come back, I mean, the reality of Christianity will be so visible to you that you decide. No one will say, ah, I was deceived to follow this man. No. The truth is out. You decide. When Jesus come back, it will be like that. There will be no stone on top of another. Every stone will be unturned. Amen. So you will be able to take a decision and no one will say anything. There will be no issue of saying, I'm a Christian. Okay, I'm a heathen. No. So be careful of greed. Because you could still say you are a Christian. You can speak out and say I'm a Christian whereas you are going to hell. Greed can make you that. When you say I'm following my dreams, it's not wrong. But what is the reason behind? Don't do that when you say you want to be better than others. Do that, it, do that for the glory of God. Amen. Let's read the scriptures. Maybe we can close very soon. Matthew 23 verse 25. Let's leave that scripture, but let's read it, Mama. Matthew 23, verse 25. Jesus was talking about greed, self righteous He says what? Woe to you, self righteous scribes yes. and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the plate, but inside they are full of extortion and robbery and self-indulgence and restrained greed, that is. Greed can make people to say you are holy when inside you are not. That's what greed can do for you. You can still do things of charity work, but inside you are not doing it. I know some people that, you know, they can be able 
to give you something which does not even cross point. They can give you nothing. Let's call it that. They can receive a lot and give you nothing. And when they are giving, you say, oh, thank you. This man is very good. Same applies to, to the Pharisees. They had a self-righteousness when you look at them outside. But they were the ones who were against the ones who died. They kill. They do everything. But on the other side, they put a right tombstone. Colossians 3 verse 5. Why greed is very bad before God. Just read that verse. Colossians 3 verse 5. So put to death and deprived of power the evil longing of your earthly body with its sensual, self-centered instincts, immorality, impurity, sinful passion, evil desires, and greed, which is a kind of idolatry because it replaces your devotion to God. Greed is a kind of idolatry. When you have got greed, you are worshipping idol. If you love yourself, you are worshipping yourself. Greed makes you to replace your devotion from God. You cannot be a Christian with greed. When you are greedy, already you are no longer a Christian. There is something you are worshipping. You might be worshipping money, worshipping yourself. That's what the Bible says here. Greed replaces your devotion with God. If you want to pray first, check. Do you love people? What is it that you are doing to them? How far do you pray? Do you pray for yourself more than pray for others? Look at Jesus. He will pray the whole night for other people. In the morning, the power of God will come and he heal all, the, all of them. Jesus, sometimes you won't be having money you will get money from the fish to pay the tax. Why? Because whatever that was coming, it was taking it to the people. Greed is very dangerous for you. Amen. An idol worship. When you start to have greed, you are an idol worshiper. You are an idol worshiper. So you can see that the reasons why I'm preaching about greed is because many of you you say you're worshiping God. You say in the name of Jesus that in the name of money or the name of yourself you were supposed to be saying in the name of myself because you agreed. And when you say in the name of Jesus, nothing happened. I pray that from today when you call the name of Jesus you will see results. In the name of Jesus. I say from today when you say in the name of Jesus you will see results. Because look here. You won't be having anything to hide for anyone. Me, I, the moment when I realized something like that, what I did was, I just said, my wife, all this money are in your hands. Because I, I was beginning to think about this. There are some times when I'm moving around with my car, you'll think I have money, I don't have anything. I began to live a life where I don't have anything. I believe in God. I depend in God. If you live that kind of life, you won't have stress. You won't worry. But can you see, if always your money is coming from here, you're always calculating, always cal you'll have depression. Satan will always preach to you. Look at yourself. You don't have this. You don't have that. And you forget that God is the one who provides for you. This year, God will provide for you. If you believe, say amen. amen. Ask somebody, are you not greedy? The day you don't go to saloon, what happened? You become angry, isn't it? If now you have money to go to saloon, you become excited. Can you be the same when it's tough and when it's not tough? When you look at other people, you feel like they are becoming better than you. Why my things are like this? Why my things are like that? The Bible says, accept that condition. I'm praying that this week, when you start to accept yourself, God will give you what you are crying for. You'll be a blessing for many. 
I said, you're going to be a blessing for many. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The, mo the moment I did that myself, I did that here in Charis, and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. The moment when I realized that I'm not supposed to be greedy, I began to allow everybody, everybody, I wanted everybody to work with me here. And I've seen that. When everybody started to work with me, I began to understand, oh, there's something like this. You can learn from people who are following you. I've learned a lot. You can learn from other people who are weaker than you. You can learn many things that you don't even know. I've learned that. And I went to a point whereby I could not even say, okay, this one, I want to prove that is small. I allow everybody to expand, to be very big, the way it can be. And when I realized that you will never overtake anyone who allow you to be big. You will never. But if you try to suppress others, you will see them coming up to be on top over you. This year, I'm praying that God will guide you to your destiny in the name of Jesus. Without the spirit of greedy. Without the spirit of greedy. Some of you are Christians, you are wonderful, and God wants to bless you. But because of this greedy issue, greed is affecting you. You are so selfish. You are so selfish. Even to your spouse, you are selfish. In your marriage, you are selfish. Think about the issue of you are able to dress so nice, but your partner cannot do that. Check yourself from down in the house before you go and worship God. And God will teach you many things in the name of Jesus. Are you ready to remove greed out of your life? Let us all stand. People here now to come and stand in front of me. I'm waiting for you. If you are this side everywhere, greedy people come. Greedy. Come and stand in front of me here. You say, I'm greedy. I want to change now. There are many people from that side there. You are greedy. And here you are praying. You want God to bless you. God will never bless greedy people. Come, you greedy people. You are blocking yourself. You are stagnating yourself. Come. Today you can tell yourself, I want to change and follow God. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer. Amen. Say, Holy Father, Holy Father. I, can I can see I'm a sinner because I cannot hear your voice. There are many people I failed them that I was supposed to have reached them out. If I'm failing to reach them physically, I cannot reach them spiritually. Holy Father, I confess my greediness. I confess my greediness. Today, today, I will live a life that you want me to live. I will live a life that you want me to live. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian. I want to live a holy life. I want to live a holy life. I need to support those who need my support. I need to support those who need my support. I need to love everyone. I need to love everyone. Enter my heart. Enter my heart. Clean my heart. Clean my heart. With the precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. I believe I'm your child. I believe I am your child. And I will live this holy life. And I will live this holy life. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap hands and rejoice. Going back, God, God bless you. Amen. Greedy makes you to suffer. You even suffocate yourself. You have to prove like you don't have money. I've seen many of them failing to the uh, responsibilities that God has given them. Your blessing starts when you bless others. Your blessing starts when 
you bless other people. If you want to be a blessed person, look at others and do not deny them what they need. That's where God will lift you up. Lift up your hands and ask Holy Spirit from now on to guide you in whatever is sending you prayer. Holy Spirit, guide me. I will obey. Wherever you are sending me, guide me. I will obey. I will obey. I will hear you and do what you say. Guide me, Lord. Guide me, Lord. I will obey. Pray louder. Pray louder. Holy Spirit, guide me. In the name of Jesus, I will obey. I will obey. I will love your people. I will obey. I will serve you faithfully. In the name of Jesus, carry on praying. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Jesus, Jesus I want to be like you. Oh, oh Lord, I, I want to be, be just, just like you. you. Carry on praying. Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, I want to be just like you. Lift up your hands and sing the song. Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. You are praying. Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Lord. I wanna be just like you, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh Lord, I want to be just like you. Sing louder. Oh Jesus, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh Lord, I want to be just like you. Jesus, Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus. I want to be like you. Oh Lord, oh Jesus. I want to be like you. Listen, today when you live here, you can go and look at your life. You can go and look at your life. Am I really Christian? Am I? I mean, because a Christian is a person who's having Christ in him. Thank you, Jesus. You begin to check yourself. You must not deceive yourself. Do not deceive. Many times we deceive Jesus. ourselves. What is it that moves me a lot? 
when others are becoming better, do I feel pain? When others are successful, do I feel pain? I mean, if you are the only one who's coming on top, how do you feel? Today you go home, you look at yourself. Am I really representing Christ? Jesus. Let's sing again. Jesus, 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 I want to be like you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus I want to be, be like, like you. you. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I want to be like you. Lift up your hands and sing. Oh, 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 wanna be just like you. My Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh, oh Jesus, Jesus, I want to be like you. Jesus, 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 I want to be like you. Oh Lord, I wanna be just like you. My Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh Jesus, Jesus, I want to be like you. Oh Lord, oh Jesus, I want to be like. Oh Lord, I wanna be just like you. Stop there. There are things, there are things you will never learn from school. You will learn them by reaching out. You will never learn from school. School gives you a wonderful foundation. You are able to communicate. You are able to advance. You are able to do many things. But there are things you will learn like Jesus. Jesus never went to school. But by reaching out, by loving people, you will learn. There are many things that I've learned from you people. I've learned. I've learned. You'll be able to take the, uh, the pain and feel the pain of someone. You can learn that. You can learn to be able to feel when someone is attacking you, you can learn. You learn to curb the pain of the attack when it comes to you. You learn the pain of someone when it's under attack. So if you don't reach that level, you have not learned anything. So God is going to help you when we move from here. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe we need to be Christians from now, whereby when we look at someone, we want to help. God knows your heart. He knows how far you can go. And temptation and test is coming your way. Can I tell you this? How far you are able to help is how far God will be able to bless you. If you reach out from this place, when you move out from this place and you reach out, you pray for others. God will honor you. God will bless you. God will lift you in Jesus' mighty name. Can you just receive the blessing wherever you are? Receive what you are here for wherever you are. I feel anointing, but I don't want to lay my hands on you. When I'm stretching my hand to you like this, receive what you are crying for. Receive what you are here for. Receive what you have fasted for. Receive what you have been prayed for in the name of Jesus. Be a blessing this week. Let the word of God change your life this week and be a blessing in the name of Jesus. What I'm seeing you now in your life, you know, the standard of seeking God is going to grow and the blessings will follow you in the name of Jesus. Receive that blessing in Jesus' mighty name. I say receive that blessing in the name of Jesus. I want to say congratulations in Jesus' mighty name.